will talk about the career path in risk management and quantitative research so if you are working uh, in banks or insurance company in risk management uh, so what career path you can take so we'll discuss that uh, before that let me talk in brief about the job profile of a risk management expert a quantitative risk management expert in banks and insurance companies so these are people from quantitative mathematical and coding background people having strong interest in uh, in quantitative aspects of uh, um, you know finance uh, so you can call it quantitative finance you can call you can call it mathematical finance you can call it data science in in finance you know um, but you know people having interest in maths and coding and such things right and then <clears throat> you must be having interest in banking and insurance because uh, you will be working mostly in in these two sectors banking or insurance or you could also be working with uh, uh, hedge funds and pension funds uh, investment funds uh, such um, you know areas a um, lot of these people also do uh, professional certification in risk management for example frm and cfa cqf but it's not mandatory uh, i've seen people more people without these certifications than with so it's not mandatory but nice to have um, then you must be having interest in regulation because risk management and banking is all about regulation um, unlike uh, you know similar positions in other sectors for example you are a data scientist in e-commerce company or in manufacturing company you may not have to deal with uh, regulations a lot but in banking and financial service companies you will have to deal with regulation um, a lot um, and then uh, most of your time you will be spending in uh, banks insurance companies and fintechs um, you know I, I rarely seen people moving from risk management to other fields uh, you know you could also work for consulting firm research firms uh, you could work for kbmg pwc such uh, companies but uh, it's unlikely that you will after working for many years in banks you will move to let's say e-commerce company that will be a change of your career but uh, your skills uh, will be very less useful there so what um, is the career path how does it look like so you start to with a junior analyst junior quant um, you know uh, you could be a fresher fresh out of university with a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a phd or you you have someone uh, with just one or two years of experience so you was um, you have less than three years of experience and you, you are a junior analyst and then you move on to become uh, a senior analyst uh, with some experience uh, you become a senior analyst and then you become a team lead you manage a team and then you could also become a team lead for a bigger team right uh, with more people uh, there are different types of you know designations i'm not going to spend much time on the actual designation of such people uh, in some banks you you call it vice president in some banks you call them senior risk manager uh, you know so there's a lot of these designations so you know but but uh, the role is more or less the same like you lead uh, a team of 10 people or 15 people 20 people right and then you become a, a senior vice president uh, or a department head a director uh, right where you manage more people like 30 40 people you also do a lot of other activities hr related activities delivery activities and stakeholder management activities i'll discuss uh, in detail in the next few slides and and then finally you could be head of a very big department uh, you could be cro of a given business unit or you could be a group cro like cro of uh, the entire bank uh, or you could be cro of a given country right a big bank has many cro's right each country will have its own CRO. CRO means Chief Risk Officer. So you could also be, uh, you know, uh, you could also reach that level. Uh, and usually that is after 20, 25 years of experience in, in banking risk management. So you start with zero to three years of experience as a junior analyst, move on to become a senior analyst and team lead in next uh, three to five years and become a team lead uh, vice president after eight to nine years and become a vice president director after about 10 to 12 years right again uh, the, this designation could vary uh, so the u.s banks have got different designation compared to the european ones so don't worry about that um, 
a little more about the profiles uh, as a junior profile you will be building models uh, in in a particular risk area uh, whether it's credit or market or pricing or you know many such area operational risk uh, you will be uh, developing your skills model building skills in these areas you'll write a lot of code in different programming languages uh, you will extract data build models so it's a very technical profile um, and you will be specializing in just one of these areas so you, it's unlikely that you will be specializing in more than one area right you could change your field after a couple of years but uh, you know you will not be working in credit and market risk area at the same time so that's not going to happen you will also be learning a lot of products financial products even with a finance background it is unlikely that you will be knowing much before working in bank so you will be learning a lot of uh, products uh, financial products you will learn about regulations and how to uh, adhere to regulations so that's also important so a junior profile is a very uh, specialist type of profile where you will be developing your school your skills in a niche area in a given area then as you move on as you become a senior analyst you uh, first of all you will be uh, an expert in uh, in a given area because you have now worked as a junior analyst for a couple of years and you have a high level of expertise in coding and quantitative research and and in, in some of these products uh, so you should be able to coach the junior analyst so that's that's your role and at the same time you'll also be uh, working a lot hands-on so you'll be developing models and writing code as well so senior analyst position is also very hands-on uh, uh, position uh, but at the same time you will be learning to actually become a team lead in a couple of years time so you will be also spending time on presenting results to management uh, although you will be needing a lot of help from your own seniors and leads uh, but but still you know it, it's a transition right uh, this is this is a phase after you have spent let's say five years um, doing hands-on activities it's a transition phase for you to become a lead uh, right so you will also be developing your skills in people management stakeholder management you know such uh, soft skills which will be needed uh, in your role in the future and then you become a lead after about you know six to eight years you know people who are really good they become team lead uh, even uh, after six to seven years but it could usually take about uh, seven to eight years so you are an expert in more than one area so you have not just worked let's say as uh, as a market risk uh, expert but you also have expertise in liquidity or interest rate risk um, so you have expertise in more than one areas you are responsible for quality assurance so uh, so uh, any uh, project that is delivered any report that is delivered to senior management or to regulators you are the one who will be uh, responsible for quality assurance so that's important activity then you also you know um, engage yourself in team building activities such as hiring people coaching junior people mentoring people uh, okay so mentoring spelling is wrong here by the way and and you will manage a lot of senior stakeholders uh, you will be talking to CROs and department heads and you know team leads from other teams uh, you will be involved in a lot of these management activities okay and then you will also have lots of uh, delivery responsibility that means um, <clears throat> um, yeah you will be responsible for delivery of different projects implementation projects um, monitoring projects development projects uh, you know such projects and uh, you might also be involved in uh, communications with regulators and auditors although probably not at your level sometimes it is ha it happens at a bit higher than you uh, right the department head or uh, director level but still right if you're leading a team and you have expertise your expertise will be needed while communicating with regulators so you'll still uh, be needed in uh, in meetings with regulators and auditors uh, right you'll also be training a lot of people uh, project managers senior analysts um, so you will do a lot of act such activities coaching and mentoring related activities uh, but again you know this is uh, in many banks actually this is again a hands-on role uh, i know in many banks especially in the u.s bank you will still be writing code as a team lead uh, you'll be still be developing models you'll be doing quality assurance you'll be uh, doing the review work uh, you'll be writing report 
so it's a very hands-on role as well and I have seen also people with 15 years of experience uh, working at this level so it's it's not a surprise that uh, you, you will just be doing people management that's not something you, you could expect uh, it could be a mix of both people management as well as content process as well as content but it, it, it could also be a, a fully content based or it could also be fully a people management best role then you have a uh, little more senior positions vice president and directors uh, again don't go by the designations uh, in some places the team lead can also be a vice president but um, uh, and in some other places you call them actually senior vice president uh, so you actually lead um, a team of leaders or you lead a, a larger team okay and you do a lot of hr stuff actually like hiring uh, making sure that the onboarding is it's proper um, right and um, and you are you are expected to be answerable to a lot of questions actually or lots of questions right uh, questions from all kinds of risk management areas um, and this is for sure not a hands-on role you will not be developing models uh, or reviewing them but you will be doing uh, some level of quality assurance and uh, you will be needing expertise from from other team leads working under you to uh, do such activities to do quality assurance to uh, be involved more hands-on um, so yeah you are basically leading a team of leaders right and you are part of many committees where you will be asked opinion on uh, so you know you should also have good uh, knowledge on content you need not develop models or write code but you should know actually what's happening you should be able to explain uh, the results from the models uh, you know um, or whatever is coming out of the code so yeah you must be really good with content as well and then you must uh, you will be having a lot of delivery responsibilities right you'll be delivering uh, more than one project and for that you'll be uh, relying upon you know other leaders so this is a typical leadership role where you will need uh, other good leaders to help you actually uh, deliver projects on time with sufficient quality. So you will be responsible for, for you know promoting other people. So the ones you really like uh, them to be leader and people who are focused and good at delivery, they are the ones you will be needing. So you will be the one who will take the decision who to promote and who to uh, you know. So you, your responsibility will be more about planning, right? Um, like allocating resources and 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 coming up with timelines for everything so you, you actually you know sh sh um, you know you come up with the vision for the for the team for the department so yeah you have much bigger responsibility than the team lead and you manage a wide range of uh, stakeholders it need not be just people from risk management maybe people from business people from it people from data time people from uh, uh, you know security team audit teams you just you just name it uh, you will be talking to people from various uh, other departments within the bank right and you know you will reach you'll be able to reach uh, to this position uh, with at least 10 years of experience but in most in my experience are at least having more than 15 years of experience uh, in this role uh, so yeah this is a very senior role so you must be having at least uh, you know 10 years of experience but on average uh, we must be having more than 15 years of experience then you have the md and cro roles you know now these roles are actually either department head that means you are leading a team of let's say 200 people or 300 people um so you are you are head of department for uh, you know uh, credit risk management where there are more than 200 people working or your head of department of model validation where there are 100 people working or your department head for audit right so that kind of positions or you are a CRO for a given country um, or you are a CRO for a given business line right uh, so that's a very senior position so it's a board level position many often often times but in in very big banks it's, it's actually not a board level position then you also have group CRO that's even a higher positions than this one but you come up with a strategy for the bank's risk management uh, so you are responsible for departments functioning overall functioning um, so it's a very executive level position actually 
where you will for sure not be doing any hands-on, uh, right? You will not be writing report, you will not be writing memos, you will have people to do it for you, but you will be responsible for the outcomes of this. So, you know, so it's, it's also a role that requires a lot of uh, content knowledge, unlike in other departments where people from general administration background can perform well in quant and risk management area, data area, you really need to have knowledge about the area. You must be someone who have uh, been through, you know, all these, uh, um, all these uh, steps, right? Uh, you must have been, you must have worked as a team lead, as a, as a director in the past. Without that, you will not be able to uh, become a CRO or managing director in risk management. Uh, because you you will be asked a lot of questions which are very content related also. Uh, you will be educating other board members, other business people on risk management. Um, so they will look up to you for advice on many areas. You will be talking to government, you will be talking to media and regulators sometimes. And that's not easy to do unless you will really prepared and you have the experience and expertise uh, to do. So again, this is not a general management role. That means you'll, you will not find people, let's say, who have worked in IT for 20 years or 25 years, given a CRO role. Uh, it's very unlikely, right? So they will rather promote someone who is who has been working in risk management for 20 years rather than hiring from a different department. Um, then the last point, maybe, you know, the group CRO, okay? So the group CRO is the perhaps the final position for risk management. I know that many CROs have gone on to become CEOs also. This has happened in your operationally. Some of the CROs uh, were promoted to CEOs position. Um, but this is like the CRO being in my view is, is the highest position in risk management and in quantitative research. And uh, remember one thing that it's not just the quant people who are fighting for the CRO. There are other areas of risk management which are non-quant related, right? Uh, for example, audit, right? Audit uh, also comes under risk management in many uh, banks. And that's also such, uh, you know, those people also competing with you for, you know, these senior executive positions. So that's the, the final position and people who do well there for some time, they even become a CEO. And this is more recent phenomenon, by the way. Because most CROs do not have PNL experience. That means they do not have experience of managing um, profit and loss. Except maybe in some, like they may, might have worked as traders in the in the past where they have PNL experience. But most CROs do not have any PNL experience throughout the career. They are now manage a uh, profit and loss uh, of a given business unit. Uh, so without such experience, it's very unlikely that you will be given a CEO position. But this has happened in the past. Recently, in one of the very big European banks, this has happened. So it is likely that in the future, maybe many CROs will become a CEO. Um, yeah, even though they may not be having a PNL experience. All right. Any questions? Please let me know down below.